Hello, I would like to welcome you to this presentation of the Anti Superbox Challenge, a European H2020 challenge. My name is Gonzalo Rodrigues, and I will go through the presentation explaining to you what the Anti Superbox Challenge is and what we aim to do with it. This challenge is composed of several entities from a lot of European countries. Uh, we have formed a consortium based on the needs from the hospitals and from several institutes around, around Europe. The consortium is led by Aquas, which is a, the lead procurer in its, uh, part, its part of Spain. It's an agency related to quality of healthcare services. And several other, several other entities are a part of the consortium and are also part of the European, uh, of the European group. The consortium and the buyers group is mostly made from institutes that are from Spain, from the UK, from Germany, from Sweden and from Italy. We as, we as uh, ECO are presenting a part of Spain and there are other procurers that also represent Spain. So I will now present what we were challenged with and what we want to uh, include in this anti-superbox project. Mostly, we want to do three main things. The first one is to improve. What do we want to improve? We want to improve mostly hospital care process quality and also the administration of appropriate antibiotic therapy. Both of these improvements are related to improvements regarding how the healthcare system can maintain and can improve on the quality of the services presented both to the patients and also to the healthcare workers. The anti superbox challenge has three main focal points. One of the main issues and one of the main interests of, anti -superbox, of the anti superbox challenge is to improve. The improvements that the anti superbox challenge has proposed to take care of and to deal with is mostly hospital care process quality, so increasing the quality of the service provided by hospitals and also the administration of appropriate antibiotic therapy. The way in which these improvements are institutionalized in, and that the way they can be done by the anti-superbox project, anti project and the whole consortium is through the decrease and mostly the increase of um, the way we can detect anti-superbox and therefore we can detect them direct a specific treatment towards them and make it so that the patients don't have to stay as long and therefore allow for the hospital to not have as many costs and to decrease the length of stay from these patients. The other big improvement and the other big main challenge of the anti superbugs is to reduce several other aspects. The reduction that the anti superbugs is trying to achieve is via the economical and operational impact of superbugs. This way we can not only decrease the costs in which that the superbugs create in the healthcare system, but also reduce other aspects of the hospitals that are, that are related to the patients, such as, for example, the length of stay. This, is, this means that the improvement and the reduction are directly correlated. By reducing and by improving on the length of stay and the costs related to each patient that is infected with the superbug, we can also relate the reduction of the challenge, the reduction that the challenge approaches by showing that the community and the social impact of superbugs is also to be reduced because not only will people be more understanding and comprehend better the fact that they entered a hospital to be cured but got reinfected or infected with a superbug, they will understand that the fact that there is a technology that is allowing the hospital to deal with such an issue makes it so that the people also understand better what it is that the hospitals have done in order to become better at solving a very large and very large scale issue such as the superbugs. The reduction and the improvement that the anti superbugs challenge is trying to create is also comes with also comes with a new form of infection control and surveillance 
which is what we managed or we want to create by proposing and by challenging ourselves with this project. The relation to this surveillance and infection control system is that it will allow us to create a technology that can target both fomites and hospital environments, which means that the whole hospital and the people and the healthcare workers that are part of the hospital will also be monetized. And through this technology, we will be able to detect not just the superbugs, but also the carriers. The continuous and high frequency detection that we expect from this technology is also something that will allow us to be able to create a true surveillance and infection control system. Without this, both the fomites and the hospital environments we plan on targeting will not be enough for the system to work in the, the way that the consortium expects it to work. Therefore, a continuous and high frequency detection not only allows for this surveillance system to work in the most optimal way, but it also allows for the reduction and the improvements that we want to generate with this project. So the alertness that this system allows the, allows the hospital to have creates a much faster reaction time regarding the superbugs that are detected, both at, start, at the start of the entrance of a patient and also at the end when, when the patient leaves and the rooms or the areas that the patient was involved with are able to be cleaned much faster as well because of the fact that we are aware and of the presence of superbugs. This means that the contact and isolation protocols which are usually related to surveillance control systems will be in place much faster and will be much easier also to apply to the, to the specific patients that are infected with specific superbugs. The creation of these protocols is something that will also be improved by the fact that there is a new technology regard, that detects and is able to fastly show to the healthcare workers where and who has a specific, and a specific superbug. These are the three main challenges and the three main interests of the anti superbugs challenge. Mostly to improve healthcare quality, to reduce both length of stay, the costs, the economical impact, and the community impact and social impact as well, and to create by to create a new surveillance and infection control system that is related to all of these improvements and reductions. Now I will talk about what the needs from the project uh, participants were and how they expressed themselves in terms of the superbugs that were to be detected and also re in regards to how the system would be internalized in the hospitals. Mostly we decided upon three main superbugs. We have Klebsiella pneumonia, we have Clostridium difficile and we have MRSA, which is methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. These are our top priority superbugs. These three main superbugs were chosen because of their high morbidity, their high mortality, and also the high risk of spreading and the prevalence in all the countries that are part of the consortium. Now, I will also explain a bit of how the technology or what we expect from the technology in terms of detection. Mostly, the three superbugs that we, that we also chose are, have, a, have a volatile organic compound profile, which means that they are, they are molecules that define and create a profile, of these, a profile of these three superbugs, which makes them easier to detect through air samples. One of the requirements of the technology is that it is able to detect and identify these microorganisms through their volatile organic compound or VOC profiles. The other big requirement that we had was that it was a real-time detection and identification of the, of the superbug. Real-time detection and identification of the superbug is essential for us to be able to direct antibiotic therapy as fast as possible and therefore all of the improvements and the reductions and the new surveillance and control inf and infection control system so that all of these components are able to be unified in one technology. 
the last main requirement of the anti-superbugs detection technology is that it's non-invasive. Through the aspect that it is a VOC, a VOC detection, it could be easier or it could be understandable that it could also allow for an invasive sampling for it to detect it. But our avant-garde decision was to make it non-invasive because of the fact that an invasive type of sampling also increases both the risk of infection with either new superbugs or new microorganisms or the risk of reinfection, but it also makes it so that the contamination from healthcare workers and other patients is lower and it also almost eliminates this risk. The way in which this technology is going to be introduced in the hospitals also means that it has to be integrated in the hospital's information system. This is something that we expect the companies that will present themselves to, the, to this challenge will be able to do as well as create a technology, a detection technology through VOC of the specific superbugs. The fact that there is an integration system that needs to go into the hospital's information system means that there is a software that needs to go into the technology and that allows for the information collected by technology to also be integrated in the, in the information that is collected by the hospital itself. This is the way that the technology can be integrated into this hospital workflow and therefore increase the fastness of the reaction to the presence of a superbug. Lastly, this anti-superbug technology will act, as, as I said before, as a local surveillance and infection control system. This means that it will not only be present as a detector, but also it, it will be informatically present and electronically present in the hospital, making it so that the pathway from a specific room or a specific hospital environment or a specific fomite has a direct and fast impact on the hospital system and, and that the healthcare workers are able to access this information as fast as possible. Now, this is a H2020 European challenge and therefore it has a specific format, which I will briefly explain, and it is called a pre-commercial procurement. This pre-commercial procurement has several phases which work kind of like a selection process for companies that develop and that are interested in developing this type of technology. A pre-commercial procurement, first of all, looks for companies that are able to present a technology and that are ready for the presentation of a new type of technology that is not available in the market, but at, that is the next step on the technologies that are already existent. This is made through a call for tender. A call for tender allows for us to present the challenge to several companies and, then, and from then on the challenge, the challenge is either accepted or denied by the companies and the companies that present themselves to us will be analyzed and decided upon to go on to the next phases. The phase that comes after the call for tender is phase number one. In this phase we have chosen four bidders, four suppliers, for companies from the ones that presented themselves or that reacted to our call for tender and each of these companies will be receiving a total amount of 78,000 euros per, per company and these, this is basically a call or a phase for them to be able to start, uh, to start or to develop further the technology that they are already aware of or that they are already creating. The phase that comes afterwards is a phase where the consortium and all of the, all of the boards that are available to discern which of the companies are selected to continue on with the process is a phase that allows for a maximum of three bidders or three suppliers and on, we, on which each of them can receive up to 360,000 euros for the prototype development, meaning that the creation of the technology is already in process and the necessity of the company now is to be able to create a prototype that will then on, the fa on phase three which allows for a maximum of two bidders to receive up to 726,000 euros for the small scale field testing of the product at several hospitals from the consortium mostly FMT which is Fundación Mutua Terraza from Spain PAT, which is Provincia Autónoma de Trento, from Italy, and Helios, which is a 
private clinic institute from Germany. This basically allows you to understand how the process of the pre-commercial procurement will occur and what kind of uh, expectations the companies that present themselves to this, what kind of expectations they can have regarding the monetary compensation and also regarding what kind of workload they will have to do towards, the whole, towards their presentation to the challenge. So if you want to find further information on anti-superbugs, you can follow the link that it will, present, it will be presented on the video. You can also contact us through the email that is also presented, or you can contact me directly. My name is Gonçalo Rodrigues, and you can contact me directly via my email. So thank you very much for your time, for your patience, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.